Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black aggro deck in standard and one of the new additions from M21 includes Demonic Embrace, a 3 mana enchantment aura enchanting one of our creatures, giving it plus 3 plus 1 and flying and it also turns it into a demon and we can cast the Demonic Embrace from our graveyard by paying 3 life and discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. So Embrace gives us a nice recursive enchantment that turns any of our creatures into a huge threat and it pairs especially nicely with Rotting Regisaur, turning it into a 10 powered flyer that can close out the game in just 2 attacks. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck here, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full playset of Gutter Bones, a 1-mana 2-1 Skeleton Warrior, enters the battlefield tapped, and for 1 and a black we can return Gutter Bones from our graveyard to our hand if the opponent lost life this turn. Then we've got Knight of the Ebon Legion, arguably the best 1-drop in standard, as a 1-2 Vampire Knight, and for 2 and a black, Knight of the Ebon Legion gets plus 3 plus 3 and Death Touch until end of turn, and at the beginning of our end step, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a Knight of the Ebon Legion, and the devil is in the details here, because one interaction that can come up in this deck is that we can grow the Knight of the Ebon Legion by losing 4 life ourselves, which also works, so if we happen to have a spawn of mayhem, in play which makes us lose one life at the beginning of each upkeep as well as return a demonic embrace from the graveyard at the cost of three life we could potentially lose the four life necessary to put a plus one counter on knight of the ebon legion although we're likely also just dealing for damage to the opponents by attacking with the spawn of mayhem or the demonic embrace in the first place but just a small interaction worth pointing out and then our last one drop is Serrated Scorpion, a 1-2 Scorpion, that when it dies deals 2 damage to each opponent and we gain 2 life, makes for nice sacrifice fodder and still quite threatening if we enchant it with a Demonic Embrace. Then at 2 mana we've got the full placet of Black Lance Paragon, a 2 mana 3-1 Human Knight with Flash so we can play that instant speed, and when it enters the battlefield target Knight gains Death Touch and Life Link until end of turn, so it can gain a bit of life to offset the life loss from Demonic Embrace, and can also give our Knight of the Ebon Legion Death Touch if we don't want to be bothered to uh, activate the ability, we can just give it Death Touch with the Paragon instead, maybe we don't have the mana to activate the Knight and the Paragon can catch the opponent off guard. And then we've got two copies of Kindsale Freebooter, another new edition from M21, reprinted from Ixalan as a 2 mana 1 2 human pirate with flying. And when a Freebooter enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand, and we can choose a non creature, non land card from it, and exile that card until the Kindsale Freebooter leaves the battlefield. So this gives us a bit of hand disruption, but also provides a small clock that can help us enable various spectacle cards. And then our last addition from M21 is a Grasp of Darkness, as a 2 mana instant speed removal spell giving target creature minus 4 minus 4 until end of turn. I'm playing this over Eliminate, just so we can take care of some larger creatures, thinking of Torbran, which doesn't die to Eliminate, Winota, another big one. So there's quite a few cases where Grasp of Darkness will be able to take care of a creature that Eliminate does not take care of. Of course, Eliminate has the advantage of taking out small planeswalkers, and can also take care of larger creatures at 3 mana like Uro or uh, an opposing Rotting Regisaur, which Grasp of Darkness cannot take out one for one as easily. Then at 3 mana we've got our own playset of a Rotting Regisaur, 3 mana 7-6 Zombie Dinosaur, but comes with the drawback of having to discard a card at the beginning of our upkeep, so of course the plan is to empty your hand as fast as possible, so the drawback of the Regisaur doesn't matter as much. And then we've got our four copies of Demonic Embrace, typically want to play this on a creature that doesn't already have flying, great with our Rotting Regisaur if the opponent has a bunch of chum blockers out, like Cauldron Familiar, which otherwise can uh, prevent us from getting any damage in. And then we've got our full playset of Spawn of Mayhem as well, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four demon with flying and trample, but it also has a spectacle cost for 1 and double black, so if the opponent lost life, we can play it for 3 mana instead. And at the beginning of our upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals 1 damage to each player, and then if we have 10 or less life, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And of course, with all the life loss from Demonic Embrace, that can definitely add up. We also have Castle Lochthwain, which can lose us a bunch of life. So we do have ways of dealing ourselves damage to just uh, grow the spawn of mayhem, even if we're up against a control deck. 
And then last but not least, we've got two copies of Rankle, Master of Pranks at 4 mana, a 3-3 Legendary Fairy Rogue with Flying and Haste, and whenever Rankle deals combat damage to a player, we can choose any number of abilities between each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature, discarding a card, usually not a big drawback if we're already empty-handed, losing one life and drawing a card is great if we just want to deal additional damage to the opponent, and then each player sacrifices a creature can also synergize with our serrated scorpion, which we sometimes don't mind sacrificing anyway, or a gutter bones which we can return back to our hand. So quite a bit of synergy with Rankle, and it just gives us another evasive creature that can help us close out the game. And then a mana base, 20 basic swamps, and very important also 4 copies of Castle Lothwain. This is our way to refuel in the late game, make sure we can keep drawing action, and potentially outgrind even the more controlling decks, just by drawing into any random creature and then being able to use Demonic Embrace out of the graveyard to turn it into an actual threat. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, with a reasonable hand, we don't have a 2-drop, but... Uh, Otherwise, her hand's quite good. Definitely a lack of powerful 2-mana creatures in this deck. I've got Black Lance Paragon, Kindsail Freebooter, but that's about it. Some other lists like to play Stonecoil Serpent as well, as kind of a curve filler that lines up well against the Fairy Time Raveler, with the protection from Multicolored. Also makes for a nice target for Demonic Embrace, potentially. And looks like we're up against blue-eyed flyers. Alright, so the demonic embrace can give us access to a flying creature on defense if necessary. For now we'll just send in both creatures. Happy to pump the knight, happy to trade gutter bones. Opponent takes it. We'll let that happen and then... Yeah, I don't mind just playing the rotting register here. Can discard a Paragon, play Demonic Embrace, and take it from there. So your opponent could have a Brazen Borrower here, in which case I definitely don't want to play Demonic Embrace on Regisaur. They could have a Rally of Wings, which can untap their creatures, give them plus two plus two, or they could just have a counter spell like Lofty Denial. Probably still discard a Paragon. I think I'm just gonna play Rankle. Alright, gets countered by Lofty Denial, fair enough. Knight of Heaven Legion picks up a plus one counter. Hallowed Fountain untapped. Opponent drops to five. Back up to six. And a Sea Dasher Octopus will mutate onto the Hawk. So they do go back up to seven. We'll discard Embrace, but then we still have the option of replaying it if we want to discard the card we drew. And we drew a Serrated Scorpion. I mean, I don't hate just attacking, pumping the Knight, and then playing a Scorpion. So let's attack. Opponent's probably forced to chum block. Register with the Miscreants. Alright, they're gonna Brazen Borrower bounce the Register instead. So if I pump Knight of Abel Legion, I guess they still have the option of blocking here since we're before blockers. Uh, yeah, we'll just let that happen and then probably just replay Register and play Scorpion. Empyrean Eagle pumps the Octopus, but can they afford to attack? They will. Back up to 8. And another Healer's Hawk on defense. 
Grasp of Darkness should be a great draw here. So if I kill the Healer's Hawk, then they're forced to chum the Regisaur. With the Imperial Eagle, which is not a bad deal, but what happens if I just attack with everyone here? They still have to chum the Regisaur pretty much. They could put the Eagle in front of the Gutter Bones. Because maybe I can just use a Grasp of Darkness on the Sea Dasher Octopus instead here. Yeah, let's attack with all. Yeah, I think we'll let this happen and then just kill the octopus. Leave them with Empyrean Eagle. They still have to chum block the Regisaur every turn. And at some point we can play Demonic Embrace. It's gonna be a Rally of Wings, pumping the Eagle as her opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. We are on the draw, facing a Yorion Sky Nomad deck. Uh, yeah, the sand seems fine. And pretty likely that Freebooter is going to be decent in the matchup at least. Can maybe take a sweeper like Shatter the Sky. Think we lead with Knight of Evan Legion. Then turn 3 we'll have the Threat of Activation. Alright, our opponent's on an Elemental deck instead. So the Freebooter's not guaranteed to do a whole lot. I can still attack because we're threatening a Paragon giving the Knight Death Touch. Put in blocks anyway. Alright, well, Pun is definitely trying to ramp into some big Planeswalkers. Take the Chandra first. The more immediate threats. Puts Yorion in hands on turn 3. Demonic Embrace, not bad. So, they will have a Cavalier in a couple turns, which does block most of my creatures, but at least I will be able to still pump the Knight of Heaven Legion afterwards. So I think I'm happy enough doing this. And the Knight will be able to pick up some counters in the meantime. So next turn they can play their Cavalier. A Regisaur, not a bad one. So there's no real need to play Freebooter here. We'll just uh, double spell. Could also consider pumping the Knight just to close out the game even faster. I think we're fine just emptying the hand instead. And I shouldn't really need access to land 5, so I'm fine discarding it to the Registrar's ability. Mills over a Genesis Ultimatum, so that explains the Ugin in the deck as well. And they're not too far from casting Ugin. All right. Can attack with all of these. And then it's interesting here. My opponents will be able to cast an Ugin if they have an untapped land the next turn. So I might be forced to let the trade happen and just play a freebooter here. Yeah, I guess that's all right. It's a little unfortunate that we'll have to discard Spawn of Mayhem. 
But then we can try and take over with Rotting Regisaur plus Demonic Embrace. Put in Dust, put Genesis Ultimatum on top. Interesting. Well, they can cast the Ultimatum without an extra land. So if they had an extra land, would they even bother putting the Ultimatum on top? Maybe, if they think the Leaf Kindred is getting killed. So now I'm not sure if playing Spawn of Mayhem or Freebooter is better. It's probably still the Freebooter here. Alright, so they did not have a land in hand. They had another Genesis Ultimatum. So taking Ugin is just protecting us against my opponent uh, being able to play Ugin on the following turn. Which would still be pretty backbreaking. Yeah, taking a Genesis Ultimatum probably doesn't make a ton of sense. I learned much today. But yeah, if they hit well on this Genesis Ultimatum, we could be dead. But if they don't find another Reach creature, they will just be dead to the Demonic Embrace. They just found a bunch of lands and a Risen Reef. So, yeah. Embrace Regisaur. And that should be game. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice aggressive hand here. Multiple one drops. Freebooter for a bit of disruption. Start out with the gutter bones. Turn two. Not sure yet if we want a freebooter or a double one drop. Probably better to just double one drop next turn. Alright, this could be the mirror match. So yeah, I'm not in a hurry to play Freebooter, we'll just attack and then play out another Gutter Bones and Knights. Yarok's Fenlurker gets rid of Scorpion. Opponent trades for gutter bones, that's fine. We'll just empty our hands. Alright, so this is the control variant trying to combo underworld dreams with Peer into the Abyss. Well, let's take the only removal spell they have. Was not really expecting the control variant here after uh they played Knight of Heaven Legion into Fenlurker. That's a great draw. Send in everyone. And Spawn of Mayhem survives a potential Ritual of Soot, which is pretty key. Extinction event only gets rid of half my creatures, so we're in a pretty good position. And our opponent agrees and explodes onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Four lands is a bit much, but we do have a gutter bones into a grasp and then spawn of mayhem, hopefully turn three. If we had a castle, this hand would be much, much better. If I draw one more land here, we're kind of flooding. This one's close. Yeah, the next draw step is basically gonna make or break this hand. I'll keep it. But if we draw another basic swamp, we're gonna be pretty sad. Alright, that was a good draw.
opponent with a Temple of Enlightenment into a Plains and a Watcher of the Spheres, so another blue-white flying deck. Well, Spawn of Mayhem also flies. And Grasp of Darkness, a great removal spell to have access to. Opponent passes with three mana. A Registrar to pick up. Yeah, we'll send in everyone. They might have a flash creature and then they might want to block gutter bones. I think that's okay. Fine pumping the Knight of Abel Legion if they want to block. They do still have two mana for a lofty denial. So it might be better to just pump the knight instead of playing anything else out. We'll see. Angelic Ascension. Well, I guess I want to grasp the sail in response so the watcher doesn't pick up another plus one plus one. But now they can ambush the gutter bones. Surprised they didn't block the Knight of Adam Legion actually. Opponent passes once again. Let's get in there. Brazen Borward to bounce spawn. Well, I'm happy that they let us deal the one damage. And then whatever I play here is likely getting countered. And there's a Lofty Denial. Opponent down to one card in hand. But we're getting to the point where we can double pump Knight of the Evil Legion. Demonic Embrace, also not a bad one. Probably not a great turn to attack with Gutter Bones since they can just flash Embrace and Borrower and block with Watcher of the Spheres. So instead, I'll just send Knight of Ebon Legion and we'll see what they do. Their last card could be a Rally of Wings. So I wouldn't be able to play Spawn of Mayhem here. But I can play Demonic Embrace. And where do we put it? Probably on the Gutter Bones. And that makes for a nice blocker. So the Hawk can chip in. Although they can now block with the Brazen Borrower. Whereas they couldn't block the Gutter Bones before. Rankle, interesting draw. I think we're better off just sending the Knight of Evan Legion. Play spawn. Another lofty denial.
Spectral Sailor. Can't draw them a card, but then they're chumping the Knights of the Abel Legion once again. As we're threatening two activations. Alternatively, I could have played Rankle and attacked with Gutter Bones this turn. But this should play out fine. And next turn we should be able to just attack with everyone. And this can go too poorly. So your opponent's essentially at 8. So if I were to pump twice, this is uh, 7 plus 3 is 10. So even if they have a Rally of Wings, they would still be dead. Although if they have another Brazen Borber to Bounce Knight, that would not be amazing. I guess I only have to pump once here. If they don't have any pump effects, they would be taking lethal from the one damage from Rankle here. So we can just pump once and pass. Angelic Ascension is not going to do it, so they're still dead on board. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got a uh, keepable hands. Don't have any evasive creatures, so this hand could be weak to a Cauldron Familiar Witch's Oven deck. Opponent with a turn one Watery Grave instead. Register not great against blue black, typically speaking, between bound spells and removal spells. There's plenty of answers for the dinosaur here. Well, let's hope there's no Cry of the Carnarium waiting for us. Knight of Evan Legion gets eliminated. We're actually pretty happy with that exchange considering the double Regisaur in hand. Now if I play Regisaur and they have Extinction Event we'll be sad, but if they had Extinction Event would they still have eliminated the Knights? Probably not. And same goes with the Ritual of Soot. I think I'm just jamming Regisaur. They might have a counter spell instead. Gets quenched. Fair enough. But it does confirm our suspicion that they don't have a 4 mana sweeper in hand. Which is good information to have. Interestingly, they did not sacrifice a Fable Passage, so they were really hoping for an extra land here. If I play Regisaur, the same thing might happen, but I think it's still the play here. Freebooter plus land, I suppose, plays around another Quench, but it doesn't apply a significant amount of pressure while the opponent's stumbling. Play land first in case it's a lofty denial, but I doubt our opponent's playing that card. And then we probably don't mind discarding the grasp due to Regisaur. Opponent finally fetches with Fabled Passage, but it's tapped. And then. Any reason to play Freebooter first? I guess I might as well. Eliminates the Regisaur. Alright, that's quite a hand. Well, let's take a Sabotage. Mm, 
and hope our opponent doesn't draw a sweeper and a fourth land. Demonic Embrace, not bad. Put that on the Scorpion to diversify. Opponent drowns our Scorpion. But the Knight is still lethal. I do want to have the castle in play here. Alright, and our opponent sees the writing on the wall and explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. In which case, Grass of Darkness should be decent in the matchup. Although it could also be a Witch's Oven deck, in which case a Rotting Registrar is not the best. I'll try. Maybe it's a Cycling deck. Turn on Mountain does confirm that with the Memory Leak now. So the Grasps should be okay. Registrar can apply a good bit of pressure and they don't have too many removal spells to get rid of it. So if we can find land 3 and then go register into Embrace, we should be in decent shape. Another Stinger. then I can probably discard one of the embraces here. But the game plan's pretty simple. Put embrace on Regisaur. And uh, yeah, not too many ways that can go wrong. Freebooter might also be able to take away a copy of Zenith Flare. Do I want to trade? Probably fine. They might have to Zenith Flare just so they don't die to the Registrar. But yeah, opponent just has to scoop them up. No real way for them to come back. So the Mono Black Aggro deck can be pretty brutal to play against. And we saw Registrar plus Embrace a few times, so it's definitely a powerful combo that our deck has access to, and that can close out the games in a hurry. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.